Horses come in all shapes and sizes, and it is so important that their tack fits correctly and serves its purpose. So here at Horse and Country, we have teamed up with the Society of Master Saddlers to give you all of the tools that you need to make sure that your horse is happy and comfortable. Welcome to Fit for Welfare with the Society of Master Saddlers. So first things first, how can the Society of Master Saddlers help you? Well, I'm delighted to be joined by Master Saddler and Qualified Saddle Fitter and Bridal Fitter, Helen Reader. Helen, good to have you with us. First of all, tell us who are the Society of Master Saddlers? So the Society of Master Saddlers are a membership body who um, govern all the training and assessment for manufacturing and repair of saddlery and also the fitting of saddlery. And why should we look to use somebody that is part of the Society of Master Saddlers? Um, because we've got um, lots of protocols to follow. So we have a code of conduct that all members must follow. Um, we do risk assessments when they arrive at the yard just to make sure that everything's safe. There's no wheelbarrows in the way, something that's gonna cause an accident while they're doing the fitting. Um, they follow strict biosecurity so that we're not transferring any potential diseases between yards. Um, and also all our members are fully insured. Insured, we like that. Yeah. Um, I feel like we're building up to the million dollar question. <laughs> Saddle fitter, saddler, what's the difference and what should I be looking for? Good question. <laughs> so a saddler is the person who works at the bench. They actually make the saddles, they repair the saddles. Whereas your saddle fitter is the person who's out on the road, seeing the horses, fitting those saddles to the horse. Um, and obviously some of our members might be just a saddler or just a saddle fitter, or they may be both. So how do I find the right person for me? Well. If you go to our website, mastersaddlers.co.uk, you will be able to look on there. There's a search engine and you go on and you can um, search either by a name. If you know there's a name of a local company, you want to check they're qualified, or you can search by your area, or you can literally just hit the fitters or craft, depending on what um, person you're looking for, whether it's a saddler or the fitter, and it will pop up all the local people in your area. And social license is that <laughs> term that we have heard so much of in recent years, and it feels like it is becoming more and more apparent in all walks of life. What is it and how does it apply to making sure that the tack on my horse fits correctly? OK, so social license to operate is um, basically the public's acceptance and um, approval that we use horses for sport and competition. Um, and also recreational use. So it's making sure that um, people are ethical and responsible in the way that they treat their horses um, and just putting the welfare of the horse at you know, the forefront of everything we do so that they're comfortable. It's peace of mind, isn't it, at the yeah, end of the day? Yeah, absolutely. And, and what about what I can expect? Because it might be a little bit unfamiliar to, to a lot of people. When I've found the right person to come and take a look at my horse, what can I expect when they arrive? Okay, so even before they arrive, you make the first contact with them, they'll take some details about you, about the horse, what you're going to be doing with the horse, um, the horse's history, so if there's any known problems, whether you're looking to have an existing saddle checked or bridle checked, or maybe you're measuring for a new saddle or bridle. And then once they turn up at the yard, um, they'll just confirm all that information, make sure you know they've got the right information for the horse that they've got in front of them. And then they'll assess the whole horse, so they'll look um, right along the back, along the horse's head, just check there's anything there, any asymmetries or anything that might affect the fitting. They'll then see the horse walked and trotted up so that they again can see the way the horse moves, if there's any issues there that might affect the fitting. Um, and obviously just check the horse's sound and can proceed with the fitting. And then they will look at um, the saddles just statically. They'll try them on the horse. There's several points there to assess, to check the balance, the width and the length of the saddle. Um, and then once they're happy with that, they'll move on to the dynamic fit. So we've got to see the horse ridden. There's no way we can saddle fit without seeing the horse ridden. So we watch the horse go round. We're looking to see, um, is the horse moving any differently to it did without the saddle on? Is the rider in a balanced position? Is the horse happy? Does it look like it's moving freely? Um, and then once all that's been done, we then discuss with the customer, obviously what we've seen, where they want to go forward from that and make a plan of whether they're having a new saddle or adjustment to their existing saddle. And what kind of thing would I be asked to do on my horse? So if I'm riding to show you how they go with the saddle on, yep. what are you going to ask me to do? 
It really depends on what you normally do. So we want to see whatever you normally do. So if you are normally jumping, then we would obviously need to see you jump. But we need to see everybody walk and trot and preferably canter. Um, there are sometimes situations where a horse is coming back into work from rehab or um, you know, a young horse being broken. Maybe we can only see it walk and trot at that point. That's fine. But we just have to have you know, an appointment sooner to come back and see it again at the next stage. And tell me a little bit about the different things that you can do to make sure a saddle fits correctly and the, and the kind of thing that you can do to make adjustments. OK, so adjustments could be um, flocking adjustments. So the filling that's inside the panel of the saddle, we can alter that to lift the front or lift the back, depending on um, how the balance looks on the horse. Or it could be changing the width for the saddle, which on the more traditional saddles would be another saddle, perhaps of the same style. Um, or on um, some of the more modern saddles, they've got changeable gullet plates, so it might be as simple as changing the gullet plate, and then that alters the balance, and then we'd obviously reassess everything else on the saddle and take it from there. Talk me through the gullet plate. <laughs> so the gullet plate is the reinforcement that goes in the front arch of the saddle, which would basically stop the saddle from spreading. If you didn't have that, once you put the weight of a rider on, the horse starts moving, because obviously a lot of force comes up from the horse, as well as the rider being on board, and the plate would just spread open. So you have a metal plate there to reinforce the front. So they come in different widths on an adjustable saddle. I love that. And, and there is so much that you guys can do and we're going to talk about it as the series progresses. Uh, but one other thing that I wanted to ask you about is how should we be looking after our tack at home? We're all busy. How do we make sure we keep it in tip top condition? So in an ideal world, we clean it every time we use it. I think realistically, once a week we can say is a more realistic time for people to be cleaning it so you want to strip it down um, wipe it down with warm water um, and while you're doing that it's not just a case of cleaning it it's also checking it you're checking the safety is the stitching rotten is the level wearing are there you know faults with the buckles or anything else you're just checking everything over for safety at the same time and that's the time that if you see something starting to go take it along to your saddler in the workshop they'll do the repair for you and make sure that everything's safe before you carry on. And then obviously once you've cleaned it all down, then you put a balm or a um, balsam on to feed the leather and then put it all back together again. Look after it exactly as you would your horse. Absolutely. And it should see you very, very well. Um, in terms of the bigger picture, you know, we all want the best for our horses. We all work with a whole different team of people, our instructors, our vets, our, you know, a nutritionist even along the line. Tell me a little bit how you guys fit in with that in sort of the wider jigsaw puzzle. Um, well, it's all teamwork, really. We want to fit in as much as possible. So all saddle fitters are happy to speak to physios, chiros, osteopaths, vets, um, instructors. If you want your instructor present on an appointment, it's not a problem at all. Just let us know. We make sure we can arrange an appointment when they're also available to attend. I mean, that's the most difficult thing, sometimes getting all the professionals there at the same time. But, you know, it's doable. We're quite happy to work with other people and we'll talk to them. Um, and make a plan that's best for you and your horse. Teamwork makes the dream work. Absolutely. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> um, Helen, thank you so much because it feels like there is so much to consider and this series is going to break it all apart for us. Uh, looking forward to, we'll go into more detail about fitting a saddle, fitting a bridle, and I think really just helping to get people to understand exactly what we need to be looking for, how we can help our horses and make them as happy as possible. Excellent. Helen, thank you. And if you would like to find out more, then all you need to do is go to mastersadlers.co.uk.